And with the undercard complete, the Holyfield Tyson rematch is now just minutes away. All eyes and ears at the MGM Grand Garden Arena are eagerly awaiting the sound and the fury. Now, despite the inconsistency and sometimes disappointing history of rematches, the public has firmly embraced the notion that Holyfield Tyson II will be a battle royale. Now, this is a testimony to the career performance records of these two warriors. Both Holyfield and Tyson have built their success on a foundation of pride and confidence, and the mutual respect that was forged during their first battle has now been tempered with each fighter's own, their will to win. proves that if Tyson was the best, that uh, I am better than him. The improbable has happened. Evander Holyfield pulls off the colossal upset. This is part of the game that happens, you know what I mean? Whenever you um, strive on being the best in the world or anything, um, there's going to be some disappointments. As you know, in boxing, it's unpredictable and things happen, and happen they did tonight. I just want to shake your hand, man. It's been so long. I, I mean, I just want to touch him. I went there, I, I fought and gave my best, and he fought a hell of a fight, and I, I just commend you. Thank you very much. I have the greatest respect for you. And by the will of God, hopefully we can do it again. The highly anticipated rematch between Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson is set for the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. I know that I will have to be better, and I will be better, and I look forward to retaining the championship. My belief in theory and life is to destroy or be destroyed. I'm looking forward to destroy. Boxing is not a violent sport. Boxing is a skill sport. So the whole thing, why do I have to get mad to do something skillful? I'm just um, ready to fight. I just want to fight and I want to win. I'm just going to go in there and just do what I know how to do. The whole thing is, it really don't make a difference for whatever he do. Whatever it might do, Evander Holyfield will be the best man that night. Well, you've heard the sound, and now it's time to get ready for the fury. All right, Ray, what do you expect? Repeat or revenge? Well, only two guys can decide their fate. That's Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. I don't know what's going to happen. Both these guys are ready mentally, spiritually, and physically. It's really amazing. There's nothing like the atmosphere surrounding a heavyweight championship fight. There's nothing like it. It's an event, a major event here. Okay, for one final pre-fight report from the dressing rooms, let's go down to Jim Gray. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Jim Hill. I'm now here with Don Turner, the trainer of Evander Holyfield, a champion. Don, you told us yesterday this will be Evander's easiest fight. The easiest fight of his career were your words. Why did you say that? Because that's what I truly believe. He's in better shape than he was for the last fight. He's in great spirits, as you can see. I mean, he's just, it's been a joy with this guy. You said you have no concerns. How can that be coming into a fight like this, a guy, a chance to nine months to adjust his game, that you have no concerns? Well, I have no concerns because I know what I got. In, you know, I know my guy. You know, if I concentrate on the other guy, then I take my concentration off my guy, and I just won't do it. Have you ever been around a guy who is this loose? He's singing, he's dancing, he's doing a lot of things that no. are very unconventional before a fight. No, no. All right, Don, you don't seem to have a worry in the world. No, he don't. We're ready to retain the title. And we're ready to see it. Let's send it now back out to Steve Albert. Thank you, Jim. The capacity crowd of better than 16,300 here at the MGM Grand Garden anxiously awaiting the main event. The anticipation builds as the countdown continues. And finally, we're just moments away from the opening bell. Well, postponements have jeopardized Holyfield Tyson fights over the years to the point where many of us wondered if we'd ever really be here tonight. It all goes back to their ill-fated 1991 fight. So when Tyson announced he'd suffered a cut over his left eye in sparring to postpone the original May 3rd rematch date, many said, uh-oh, we may never see these guys fight again. But despite the history of postponements, there has always been a feeling of inevitability, an aura of fate that finally brought them together. And now brings them together again, maybe for the last time, maybe not.
We bring back the fight, Doctor. What's at stake here for Tyson, aside from the obvious, the heavyweight title? I think the rest of his life is at stake. If he loses here, he loses that edge of being a great fighter or the possibility of joining the great heavyweights and becomes just another one of those heavyweights that didn't quite arrive at greatness. And, of course, for him, he has no other recourse but to fight. So it's an extremely important fight for his lifestyle, for his mental condition, and what he's going to do. As far as Evander Holyfield's concerned, his is already done. He's already up there, and if he wins again, he secures his place, and if he doesn't, he's still a great champion. But more so, he has faith, he has other business interests, and he has a life. He has a life to go to. Tyson does not. Tyson must win. And Bobby Chaz, what changes does Tyson have to make to get his redemption? And does Holyfield even have to make any changes after his successful game plan of the first fight? Well, Holyfield certainly does not have to make too many changes. He sat inside the eye of the storm where he needed to. Got inside Mike's big stuff, made him pay on the inside, punished him. On the win, used the jab. He counterclockwise walked him around the ring, tying up his left hand, pushing away from his strength. 